Hey everyone, it's Brian from Watch Complications. Thanks for joining me. If you haven't subscribed yet, what's keeping you from it? This is the next video in the Making Custom Watches series. And so I thought it was just gonna have one more and just go through casing the movement. However, I needed to create a custom spacer ring, a cushion ring for this particular uh, combination of watch movement and case. And so I thought I would take a few minutes to show you that particular step of the process. So here we are in AutoCAD, which I've shown you before in my Making Custom Dials series, whenever I was talking about you know 3D printing dial blanks. But here I just wanted to show you what the spacer ring looks like in the 3D environment whenever I design it. Again, just for some context, the steps of the process are basically draw a circle, boom, right here, draw a circle, and to the appropriate diameter for whatever the, you need the interior diameter to be. Draw a second circle that's for the exterior diameter. Then you basically create um, a solid out of this at whatever height. Bore a hole through the middle. Then you create a, a rectangle at whatever width you need from center. You know this is two millimeters wide so it's one millimeter each way from center. And then to the appropriate depth, 0.75 in this case, since the height here is one millimeter, and you know, cut the hole out, subtract uh, the two surfaces. I'm not going to get into you know the AutoCAD skills, the details, you know, doing all of this, you know, every step, but this is basically what would design. So once you have a model drawn up, uh, you can't see this in the window, I don't think, but to go to the file menu and you say export, you can choose the STL format, which is what most 3D printers take, and then you choose the solid that you want to export. So I would pick this. It will spit it out to a file then. It looks something like this. This is a sp my spacer ring STL file. I would copy this over my 3D printer and go about printing the 3D model. So that's what it looks like digitally and how I go about creating it. Again, really quick, simple. Took me like two minutes to draw up and Boom, it's ready for 3D printing. The only time consuming part is you know, getting the sizes exactly what uh, they need to be for the given scenario. So there's our custom cushion ring. Woo, let's look at it uh, printed out in real life. So now for the fun part where I get to show you the steps of the process here and talk about the spacer ring, how it fits in. I went through the process of trying different dimensions. Here's one that was a little bit too snug around the movement and probably pushed it down too hard and snapped it, which is, I like to do one of those anyway, just to see how much strength is in this in terms of the durability. And this is the good old PLA. So this is actually pretty hard to break in a circle, uh, pretty durable stuff. But I went through a series of printing different versions. Some of these don't have a cutout for the stem because at one millimeter high, I was curious if it would be small enough that it could go down in underneath the stem and still have enough uh, height above it so that the cutout wasn't necessary. So there's some completely solid ones. There's some others that had uh, cutouts that were a little bit smaller or different. But that, that's sort of the process is going through, you know, trying the different sizes, different dimensions, trying to get it perfectly versus what's drawn up based on reality and versus what comes out on the printer. Because, you know, 3D printers aren't, aren't perfect. So the final dimensions again on this ring are that it is one millimeter high. You can see there's a two millimeter wide cutout that is 0.75 millimeter deep. And the interior diameter is 37 millimeter. And then the thickness is, again, 0.75 millimeter. So it is not quite a millimeter thick um, as well, as it is high. Okay, so that's the final dimensions on the ring. Let me show you what it looks like up close with one of these in the watch. Okay, so I'm zoomed in a little bit here and I'm going to show you what this kind of looks like. Just take the spacer ring, right? Get the gap in the right spot and then put it around the movement and then just kind of push it down in the gap, sort of around the movement and between it in the case. You can see that it's sitting down in here that it's a pretty tight fit. What this is gonna do, let me zoom in here, I can show you a little bit closer. You can see there around the stem location here, there's the two millimeter gap with the cutout 
that I described in the section where I showed you the AutoCAD file. But here's the tube for the stem, so it'll fit in there perfectly. You can see this snugly fits between the movement and the case so that once the stem is in, you know, when you pull it out for setting, you know, that puts a little bit of pressure. And if there's a little bit of a gap between here, then the stem will just pull the movement, you know, forward and backward as you pull it out and push it in and it'll feel loose, the movement will feel loose. Also, if you were just to shake your wrist around really hard, you might get some, you know, shaking in there, but you want this thing to stay nice and snug, not be any rattling. And so a lot of times spacer rings, uh, or what may be called a cushion ring in this case, will sit between the movement and the case to deal with any of the tolerance difference. Because again, yeah, this case was made for this movement as a drop-in, not supposed to need anything, but you know, manufacturing is manufacturing, so, you know, there was a gap, so I just made this custom ring and fits nicely, works nicely, and it will prevent any sort of weirdness and rattling or movement uh, between the case and the actual watch movement. All you gotta do is, you know, take the ring, put it at, you know, three o'clock, you know, the gap there, and you'd set it down. Just take a toothpick or a peg wood, something like that that's non abrasive, and just you know, push it down in, get it nice and snug between the movement and the case, and we'll be good to go. Set it in there like that and tap it around a little bit. It'll, uh, if it's the right dimensions, it'll just, you know, shift down into place. Then you can put the stem in and it's good to go. One key about the height is if this was too tall, then it would interfere with the threads for the case back and screwing into the threads on the inside of the case. So this has to be the right height and that's one of the reasons why so that the case back can actually screw into the threads appropriately on the back of the case. Okay, so I know this video is showing one very specific step in this process of me making these custom watches, but I think it's a very important step to show you in the sense that if I'm gonna build custom watches, custom prototypes, and sometimes that might require custom parts and I wanna show you that part of the process as well. The movement's just a little bit too small for the case, so we need to add a little cushion there so that whenever we insert the stem and start pulling things, moving things, shaking our wrist, it doesn't move at all, um, which is an important part of the watch feeling and behaving correctly uh, whenever it's all cased and on the wrist. So next video, we're gonna talk casing the movement and the watch will be done. Thanks for joining me. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring the bell if you want updates. Check out my website, watchcomplications.com. I'm Brian, I'm out.